From October Gallery in Philadelphia, this is ATN Art TV Network. My love for the arts because I'm serving a greater purpose than just my own mm -hmm. ego. You know what I mean? It's, it's giving back to the community. And so I've been going into rural schools, uh, churches, organizations, special events. If you go to my website, ellajoyce.com, and click on to A Rose Among Thorns, you can click on to my calendar, honey. I got a calendar page. I've got a tour page now. I mean, I put the show up first just to put it up and the people won't let me stop being Rosa, so I'm loving it. <laughs> I just performed here today, uh, there was a three o'clock show. Mm -hmm. Next, I'll be in New Haven um, for the December 1st celebration, which December 1st was the famous day that she took her stand. And so what I've been trying to do is keep her memory alive and keep um, the actual facts alive about our civil rights history yes. and to go into the rural <laughs> areas where these kids don't get a chance to see the people that they see on television and they don't get this kind of entertainment. So I just left Alabama uh, through the State Council of the Arts and I went into places like Lowndes Middle School and Fort Deposit, Bology, places nobody's ever heard of but the kids loved it and it let me know that you know there's one generation that knows rock that's us old folks but then there's another generation these kids know uncle p and the waterfalls video which i did and um so it's like it's really wonderful to have a whole new generation of kids that i'm relating to now thank you and, um, it's just wonderful so thank you thank you thank you and i'm gonna ask <clears throat> elmer smith if you will please give us a brief. We took up too much time. We could only be brief. First of all, I want to thank Marissa Red Cross for the opportunity to be here today. Uh, Bob Lock for gathering this uh, incredible panel of alumni. <laughs> the answer to your uh, uh, first question for all of the panelists is, and I haven't gotten started yet. Oh. And, uh, uh, an alumnus of this wonderful university, Temple University, which is a place where uh, Dr. Russell Conwell many years ago said that there are acres of diamonds. I love the fact that Temple University is a place that stands as a beacon for people in the neighborhood. It is not necessarily a place of great privilege, but who can look at this university and see it as a place that might be a springboard for their careers. Careers that could be as illustrious as this. And so what I'm here to do, actually, I should be standing over there with you guys, I am, but I'm glad to be sitting here because I should be really just asking questions. The first question I want to know is how does a trash can get a wife, a trash man get a wife like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, El, Elmer is nothing if not smooth and always has been. <laughs> um, you know, we heard some interesting things just now. As you all were talking, I mean, we went through this road with you from being in the circus to being on Broadway to hustling in the streets. You guys are all pioneers, and you have, you have shown through the test of time that you know how to survive. How hard was it along the way to keep reinventing yourself, to bounce from the one thing to the other thing, to try and stay current, to try and get to the next thing? If anybody wants to take that. I have a dear friend who a long time told me that life is a drama with endless episodes. We are all actors and actresses on the stage of life playing our own sacred roles. While the scenes are changing, the light within us remains the same. Because I've been able to work among some of the most beautiful people on this planet in my theater world, my television world, and my personal life, I've been able to find my grounding over and over again. The decision to renew myself has been a personal choice for me. I believe that the human mind, body, and soul can recreate itself at any time. I believe that we as a people can constantly reinvent ourselves. Right now, we must seize the time. Doesn't it feel good to see us winning for a change? It just feels good. And I don't mind vicariously respecting this brother, you know? However, I do understand that each and every one of us in this room, we all have our own sacred mission. And one of the things we can do to continue to reinvent ourselves and regenerate ourselves 
is know that we come from a legacy that preceded us. Were there no Amos and Andy, you would not have a good times. Mm -hmm. Irregardless of anybody's opinion of that production, prior to good times being on CBS Channel 2, it was 23 years from the cancellation of Amos and Andy. Therefore, that is a very, very dry spell for black arts, black media. So that therefore, right now, we live in a time where art must survive. Art can be used as a healing form, a balm to reinvent and revive the people. So therefore, when I look at the context of the wonderful people that I'm allowed to share this panel with today, and the wonderful people who are here also, we are here again to once reinvent ourselves. So my rejuvenation comes from my family who loves me first and foremost, whether there's a light or a camera in my face or not. I love my work. I am not the kind of man who says, acting is my life. If I said that, then I wouldn't have a life. Acting is part of the work that I do while I'm on this planet. And I wish that each and every one of you continue to reinvent yourself at any instant moment. Thank you, Ralph. Here's what. <clears throat> I have some. I can say some. Please. Hey, so, every, you know, Ralph, Ralph, you deep, cuz. <laughs> you deep, cuz. I mean, everything I learned, you know, I, I never had my father pass when I was young. I was raised by older players like cats from the pool hall, men that would sit up and sit and chop game at me because they said I was cut like them. And so they gave me a game. And I always, even now in my business, I apply their game to my life. So I'm not really, it's you no, know, all this stuff to me is a game. You know, and they told me early in the game, if you don't make your eye, open your eyes to the new, you'll become your own enemy. Meaning you'll be saying it ain't like that good old. You know, but the new is what you are right now. So you got to look to the next generation because or you'll become your own enemy. You'll be the, become the people that hated you when you came out. You know what I'm saying? And then my daddy used to tell me if you stand in the same place for five years, if you ain't moved in five years, then you stand still because you got to keep it moving. And it ain't about your move, but what's your next move, player? What's your next move, player? I see what you got. I see you got a nice car. You got nice clothes. But what's your next move, player? You know, so I've always been the kind of cat that looked at my next move like, okay, well, I'm on TV right now, but y'all can't wait to see my next move. And people look at Ice-T like, people really hate this brother Ice-T. Ice-T just does everything just to make people angry. He does his thing. But you know what? I'm just doing me. I don't really care about it. I don't care about it. I came out the hood, and honestly, I thought I was cut from another, cl another cloth. I, I used to pray on the hood. I thought I was smarter than everybody in the hood. I was driving foreign cars when everybody's like, what is that, a Mercedes? How do you say that word, Mercedes? What is that? And I was like, look, y'all, y'all going to figure this out later. You dig? I'm moving at another speed that y'all can't catch. So when I look at the hood and the hood tick tries to dictate to me what I should be doing, I was like, y'all, I'm smarter than y'all suckers. I'm going to teach y'all later. Y'all going to catch up later. You're going to figure out what I'm doing later because I'm, I'm on a whole nother channel. So later people say, oh, that's what Ice-T was doing. That's what Ice-T was doing. And now when y'all look at Obama, I'm keeping on Obama because, you know, hip-hop, we knew this was going to happen 15 years ago, Jack. We was at the, the, the our, our audiences turned white. Our audiences turned white, and me, Public Enemy, and Boogie Down Productions, and people like that, we was out there looking at all these kids like, Wait a minute, we got a chance, and we started talking to these kids. Those kids that listen to Public Enemy, that's who voted. A lot of black people sat back and said, where all these white people come from? Because we was reaching them. So as much as y'all hated me, y'all should love a nigga right now. All right now. So sometimes the, the answer is sometimes the change is going to be so aggressive and so fast that the average cat can't understand the change. They're going to be like, well, what's he doing? Well, just wait. You'll figure it out. You know what I'm saying? So you have to have the courage to change at a speed that the average person, your friend next to you, can't even understand it. And that's when you really are going to get in the groove of life. you got to move faster than the average or else you become the average and they ain't moving. All right? That's game, Jack. <laughs>